The Pennsylvania woman who was seen smashing a window with an axe during the January 6th insurrection was sentenced to federal prison yesterday. Court documents show 43-year-old Rachel Powell, seen here, was given nearly five years in prison for her involvement in the attack on the Capitol. According to court documents, prosecutors said Powell was, quote, an active and enthusiastic participant. Powell says that she is deeply ashamed of her actions. Our colleague Ryan Riley outlined how the FBI and other intelligence agencies gathered evidence with the help of online tipsters. They're called sedition hunters. And that's the title of his book, his new book, which is out right now. We have Ryan joining us for more on the book and really these ongoing trials against January 6th rioters. Ryan, talk to us about Rachel Powell for a moment. That pink hat picture, how did it lead really to the creation of this book? And what have you learned about her and some of the other rioters? Yeah, that's really what sort of kicked it all off for me. I sort of made a Twitter joke afterwards because there's video of her on a bullhorn and she was nicknamed Bullhorn Lady. Uh, and she sort of looks like she's leading sort of a tour of the Capitol uh, in some ways as this window is smashed out um, on January 6th. She's on that bullhorn telling them sort of to coordinate together. And it was almost like she was a chaperone for an eighth grade field trip saying, right. we should probably coordinate together if we're going to take this building. It was sort of that unmistakable tone as a parent that I know when you're sort of <laughs> frustrated with your kids. Uh, so I sort of made a joke that, you know, this would, was going to lead to both criminal charges and a PTA resignation. As it turned out, uh, Rachel Powell is a mother of eight uh, and a grandmother uh, of six, um, and she uh, has, was arrested um, right afterwards. I got a tip very early on from this mysterious account saying that she had been ID'd, basically that they are trying to get this information to the FBI, et cetera. And very soon I sort of got into this world uh, of sedition hunters as they started playing a really huge role um, in this investigation and have really aided in hundreds of these uh, charges that have now been brought over more than 1,100 people. Yeah, and, and you actually said in your book, quote, I've covered the Justice Department for more than a decade and I talked with FBI informants before, but none of them hold a camera to the impact the sedition hunters have had. Such a statement. I mean, tell us more about what you learned about them, about how they work while investigating for your book. It sounds just kind of like a new type of detective. Exactly. And, you know, the, I think the, one of the main themes here is that the Hollywood image that we have of the FBI isn't the reality of the FBI. When mm. you see sort of these shows and, you know, computer enhance and zoom in and organizing all this digital information just isn't really how the FBI uh, works. They're really actually kind of really behind on technology. In fact, up until a couple of years ago, their emails were formatted as ic.fbi.gov. And that didn't stand for something cool like intelligence <laughs> community. It actually stood for Internet Cafe from the days of AOL and dial up. Wow. Um, and a lot of these slews have actually had to have FBI agents come to their homes to pick up USB drives because the FBI won't use any of these uh, sort of file sharing uh, uh, you know, websites that are so common today. Uh, there's one of the informants right before uh, January 6th was actually told that he could burn something to a DVD, um, you know, like this was still the Bush administration or something. <laughs> so I think they're they're really just sort of shattering uh, this conception of what the, uh, what the FBI does. And I think a lot a lot of the Saluz have been surprised by how far behind uh, they were to what they were doing online and sort of organizing in these online forums and very quickly bringing together a lot of this information. So all that kind of begs the question, how prepared was the FBI for the attack on the Capitol? And what are some of the problems within the bureau that need to be addressed or have been addressed since this happened? You know, political bias is definitely a component of this. Obviously, it's a conservative-leaning organization, despite what we've heard um, over the past, say, six years or so uh, coming from Donald uh, Trump. But, you know, overall, I think the technological uh, things are one of the main uh, main, one of the main obstacles for the FBI. You know, the salary scale just isn't the same as you can compete with uh, in the private sector. So if you're coming out and you're a really big computer whiz, you know, unless you really just have a really hard dedication to wanting to work for the FBI, you're leaving money on the table by joining uh, the organization. Um, not only that, they have, you know, really strict, say, marijuana protocols, right? Like, that's something that is pretty common uh, today, but you cannot smoke marijuana uh, when you're at the FBI, even though they've relaxed the rules a little bit because that was such an impediment. Now you only have to give it up for a year uh, before uh, you actually uh, sign up to join. But that's an obstacle, for, uh, for example. I think a lot of these things, they're just really behind the ball on a lot of this. Quickly, Ryan, before we let you go, just give us an update on the outstanding cases against people who were part of the insurrection. How close are we to seeing an end to prosecutions? 
So the way to think of this is on a five-year timeline. So we're already halfway through this investigation. The statute of limitations expires in early 2026. Uh, we're never going to get to uh, charging all the people who were inside uh, the Capitol that day or even attacked police officers because that is over 3,000 people and only 1,100 have been uh, charged today. But these cases are continuing to trickle in. The sleuths say the FBI really needs to turn it up because they've even identified more than 100 people who are on the FBI's uh, most wanted list for Capitol rioters today who have still not yet been arrested. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.